everyone welcome back to the channel today i'm going to build a stand for the bandsaw that's going to make it portable so i got a really good tip from another youtuber jeremy felding on how to approach projects and even though this is a super simple project i've been trying to approach all my new woodworking uh, engineering type projects in this way first is figure out what are the things that i actually want this to accomplish, what are some of the limitations that I have, and then what are some of the constraints. So following that rubric, I figured out I need to raise this table up one and five eighth inches. One amendment to this is I wanted the front of the bandsaw and the back of the bandsaw to be adjustable independently of each other. And I needed those feet to sit flush with the actual platform. And that's why I chose the style of leveling feet that I did because they allowed me to have the feet not protrude from underneath the platform. I also need this bandsaw to be mobile. I also need the front door of this bandsaw to be able to still open so I can change out the blades, obviously, and service it and I need to be able to mount casters on it. In order to mount casters, I have to have a section of the platform that's at least five inches tall because that's where the top plate of the caster is gonna go. My solution is gonna be to mount the casters on the sides and then leave the front flush with the door and then that way it can open. The design I came up with is super simple. It's literally just two by sixes screwed together nothing fancy it has a two by six going around all three sides uh, without the front and this just allows me to mount my casters i'm definitely guilty of overbuilding and over complicating certain projects so for this one i just wanted it quick and dirty get it done and make this shop space a lot more functional So to get accurate cuts on my miter saw, since I don't have a track with a stop lock, the best way that I've found to do so is to take the original piece that I cut and make all my markings off of that piece. I'll take my original piece of stock and line the butts up. I'll make a pencil line. So when you're sawing, you want your saw blade to line up on this side of the pencil line. Not in the middle, not on that side, exactly on my left, to your right. One mistake that novice woodworkers will do is they'll say, okay, each piece needs to be 29 inches long. I'll just go ahead and mark off all the pieces. So you mark 29 right here, and then you go ahead and you mark 58 on your next one and then you saw, and what you haven't done is taken into account the width of the curve. If you saw directly onto your center line, your pieces will line up, but chances are that you're not gonna saw directly under your curve line, and everything's gonna be off by about a 16th to possibly even an eighth of an inch. The fastest way I found to get the center, uh, if you wanna drill straight into the center of this, is take a marking gauge and i'll just eyeball this but if you're unsure you can mark it once from this side then you can flip your marking gauge and mark it once from the other side and you can see if i just do it about a half a millimeter longer that's going to be dead in the center so that's going to be exactly centered so now when i flip it I'll be right on that center mark. Then I'll just run that center mark along the whole length of this.
on this side, I'm gonna have the leveling feet, and then on the opposite side, I'm gonna mount these casters. That's gonna enable me to move the workbench around the space and then maneuver it much easier. So the first thing before I mount these feet is I'm gonna take a router and just cut an inset into here. And then that way these feet are gonna be nice and flush with the bottom of the platform. So I'm trying to figure out what the best way to route this is because So I opted to just clamp this to the bottom of the workbench. I think it's a little bit safer than trying to climb up on the ladder with a two horsepower router, which I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> the slots for the leveling feet and now I'm going to install uh, these casters. Now these are super simple to install. They come with this uh, handy dandy template. So all you do is put this template on your piece and then you can just punch center holes for all your screws and pre-drill those. And then also what I've found is it's best to put on the wheels after you've already mounted it. I made the mistake of putting on the wheels first and trying to screw it in, and I ended up having to take the wheels off to gain access to the lower screws. So I'll leave a link in the description, but I bought this style of caster already twice. I believe I got these on Amazon for around $26 to $30, and these just allow you to use the feet on your workbenches and to just flip these down when you want to roll it. So they're completely out of the way and your work tables aren't rolling around on casters and you're having to try to lock the feet to keep them in place. The adjustable feet that I got are super great as well. If you have something super heavy like a bandsaw, it makes it really easy to adjust. All you do is take an Allen bit with a drill and voila, you can move your super heavy bench or whatever tool you have with almost no effort. So I just put the bands on the stand, which I hope to never have to do again. <laughs> uh, and so, so I didn't mount these front feet on just because I thought when I was putting on the stand, the corner of this might hit this. So I waited until uh, the saw was on here to put these on. So now I'll put the last two leveling feet on and this should be good to go. Overall, I'm really happy with the way that this project turned out. It's quick and dirty. You can do this in half of a day and it just makes the shop so much more effective. I now have support for bigger pieces of lumber that I'm cutting, and it makes the bandsaw a much safer tool when dealing with the bigger pieces of stock that you have to deal with. It also makes it a lot easier on your blades. You have less risk of the wood grabbing the blade and twisting it and breaking smaller blades when you're cutting curves. If you have a small workshop and you need a outfeed table or you're limited on space and just need to maximize the work areas that you have, I highly recommend doing this. So if you like this video, if you found it helpful in any way, please hit the like button, subscribe below. I'll be releasing videos weekly on all kinds of fun projects like tool restorations, shop improvements, and custom furniture builds. So stay tuned.